Okay, so enough time has passed since the Mandalorian season two finale, and it's given us some time to reflect on that huge moment with Luke Skywalker, but was that the right choice? Well, that's exactly what we're here to figure out. This discussion is going to take us into some Star Wars deep cuts, so obviously I had to bust out the old subspace transceivers for my Star Wars experts that are on the other side of the galaxy, Curtis Nash and Josh Gruber. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thanks, Darren. No problem. Good to be here. Uh, so, obviously, we're here to talk about some Mandalorian. Before we get into the main topic of today's episode, and that is, was Luke the right Jedi to choose to bring in to take baby Grogu away and start trading in the Jedi temple, we can only assume? Or were there better choices? But before we get to that topic, I want to know from both of you just what you thought of The Mandalorian Season 2. Curtis, let's start with you. What would you think of that season, man? Well, I'm a bit biased, as you both know. I love everything Star Wars, <laughs> even the prequels. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks yeah. has his place in this universe, people. Oh, I already regret bringing you on as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, Mandalorian is so refreshing and is something new. And I love every minute of this TV show. This is what makes me proud that Disney owns the franchise. Ooh, okay. That's a, the that's a bold statement, considering a lot of people are kind of on the other side of that camp when it comes to Disney taking over. Well, they're wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Josh, what about you, man? What did you think of Mando season two? I agree with Kurt. Uh, I think there's a, a clear division where the movies... Uh, are a giant letdown, and there's a lot of fans out there that are saying, you know, this, the things that Filoni and Favreau are doing, that's the true Star Wars. And so, uh, like, you always want uh, a season to be better than the first, and this was leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds better. See, exactly what you mean there when you say that there's other stuff to pull from. You have the movies, which are the movies. You kind of have to take them as a separate entity, even though canonically it's all connected. Um, but I mean, there's comic books, there's video games, there's loads of cartoons you can pull from. And of course, the novels, which I myself have read a handful of. So obviously I'll be four. pulling some excellent knowledge for... A handful being like literally <laughs> five or four fingers worth? Four I have read with my own <laughs> eyes. The rest I resort to audiobooks because they are awesome. Um, and wicked. Wikipedia. And Wikipedia, obviously. Yeah, I Wikipedia. Mean, the Oracle itself and Reddit. Uh, but yeah, so that's the thing is there's so much lore to be pulling from from Star Wars. Why are we always leaning on the crutch of these series, which seems to be the Skywalkers? We get it, but we had nine movies about this family and I kind of thought that's the Mandalorian was finally going to kind of give us some stories that weren't Jedi, that weren't Skywalker, but they kind of changed that going into this season finale when they brought in Luke Skywalker and we want to talk about who we think would have been a better choice for for that. So the way that we're going to work this is off air. We've all made a list of our top five picks of who we would have liked to have seen instead of Luke Skywalker. If you hear a Jedi on the list that's on your list, you just cross it out. And when we go to you, we'll move to the next one down and we'll just keep going until we get our top five. And then we'll wrap it up with any more comments at the end. And uh, that'll be it for today's episode. So, Gentlemen, do you have your list? It's ready. I do. Mine is a, a deep cut. I went from Legends. Okay, pulling from Legends. Just strictly novels, this character's in. I picked Mara Jade. Maybe not Skywalker yet. Oh, okay. We'll just call her Mara Jade right now. So before she would have possibly met Luke. Yes, before. Well, I think she's met him by now, but in the, the novels, she uh, worked for the Empire, and she met old farm boy Luke, and she hated his guts pretty much, but eventually they fell in love. They had a child together, and she has Force powers and later becomes a Jedi Master. So, I figure she is a great character to bring in here, and whether she's a Skywalker or not, I think the character is uh, good enough that she could hold her own in this universe, that's for sure. So you don't think that... Because she's kind of tied to Luke from the Legends novels and stuff. You don't think that if they brought her in, they would need to tie her to a Skywalker? Or could they develop that character completely separate from ever running into Luke at any point? I think they ran in together, but I don't think you need to put them together. What for? This is a clean mm. slate. You literally have a clean slate. You can do whatever you want with these characters. Would it make some people mad? No! Probably. It's Star Wars. When don't people get mad when something happens? <laughs> exactly. But have we seen from this iteration of Luke post original trilogy? Like definitely he's kind of a almost a, not depressing figure, but he's a little down in the dumps. He's a little uh, hmm. feeling sorry for himself, you know, and maybe she <laughs> left. Oh, OK. Maybe she's like, I'm doing my own thing. I will take I will I will go off 
and start my own Jedi Order or learn the Force myself, just like he did in these newer books. He kind of travels around to different planets to learn ways of the Force because he's got no teacher, and maybe she's like, I don't like what he's doing. So he's Emo Luke. Oh, God, he's Kylo Ren. Yeah, he, she doesn't like Emo <laughs> Luke. Yeah, and uh, so maybe she can do her own thing. There's so many possibilities. Like I said, it's just the basis of that character was so good in Legends. Why not bring her in now? I like that idea because just kind of how you threw that out there, is that her meeting Luke and that whole thing could have already come and gone. We got 30 years to play with of, like you said, clean slate. So there's no way that they couldn't just say that all of those little interactions already took place and now this is Mary Jade out on her own. Just for anybody who maybe isn't familiar with it or who hasn't dabbled in Legends, what book would that be from if somebody wanted to learn more about this character? Oh, first off, I think the first one was Allegiance, I believe, old Timothy Zahn. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then she popped in and out and then uh, she was a big, big... Uh, deal during the Yuzhan Vong war and whatnot. So she pops up in more than one, though. It's a lot of books. It's a lot of books. The legends. Do you think that they'll, I mean, if they're in that many legends, and we kind of already know that Disney Lucasfilm is starting to pull from legends a little bit to get inspiration for new characters and stuff, do you think she's going to be like, what are the possibilities, the percentage that you think that that's a character we might see in the next five years in Star Wars? Oh, probably slim to none, just because Oh wow, legends is so specific to the characters that and their plot points that there's mm. so much you you you'd have to change like it, everything would have to change you know and from the course that they've already veered this story into it's just it, there's it's so much like of a new Jedi Order that Luke started with hundreds of Jedi already and that is not going to happen Ray might I don't think mm. Ray's gonna train like a Jedi Order she might train Jedi. But she's not training a Jedi Order. I think she's going to train it to I think be, she's moisture farming on Tatooine, by the you know, way, that movie landed for us there. She's, she's not going to train to be police or cops. She's going to be like, there might right. be Jedi who want to focus on, like, farming. There might be Jedi who want, might want to use their skills to police. There might be Jedi who hmm. just want to meditate and, you know, peace out. <laughs> there might be Jedi who— Jedi police show. Sounds like everything we need, like a buddy cop series where it's just oh. two Jedi traveling the galaxy solving crimes. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> solving crimes? Yeah. Yoda. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. I feel like a big pile of bantha poodoo here, boys. Okay, uh, Filoni, if you're listening, that's our patent. If you want to get a hold of us, you can find our emails online. So going to you, who's on your list? Who would you like to see take little wee baby Yoda Grogu off to some Jedi temple? So I went with Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tano. We hear that she was cast. She came into the show. She obviously played a different role. But uh, with Luke sweeping in and saving uh, little baby Grogu, as soon as you see that X-Wing, everybody, collective gas. Yeah, they gave us a, they gave us multiple choices there. Where it was like X-Wing, hood, gloved hand, green right. lightsaber. If you haven't figured it out by then, it's just like, all right, turn it off and go watch something else. (laughs) Even kind of just the throwback to like Luke coming down the hallway, killing droids is just Mm. like Papa Skywalker in Rogue One, killing rebel scum, you know, but with Ahsoka... Ah- Ahsoka has such like a rich story, like Kurt was saying. It's one of the characters you kind of see from uh, her inception. Like Dave Filoni created this character for Clone Wars. Snips. And, yeah, and she comes in as like a 12-year-old greenhorn, you know? She's... Mm-hmm. She likes making little jokes and quips to to Anakin and to Obi-Wan. She's super annoying at first. You see her on this journey, and then towards the end of Clone Wars, you see what happens to her. You see what, ha- like, she loses faith in the Jedi, the, the Council. They don't betray her, but they, they doubt her. And to mm-hmm. her, that's her family. She does. She can't accept that, so she she walks away. She's no longer a Jedi. Well, she's uh, as the the, the the phrase that you love hearing, Josh. It's... One of your favorite. You use all the time. She's <laughs> yeah. one of those gray Jedi that uh, we hear so much about. Gray Jedi <laughs> is good, not a term to not use. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, again, like we know where Luke's story takes us. We we've, we've mm-hmm. seen the movies. He tries rebuilding. He fails uh, from his nephew. His nephew kills all of his students. So where does this leave Grogu? Like he takes Grogu as a student. We didn't. Obviously, he's not in any of the movies. So what? Not even referenced, as far no. as we know. So one theory that like I like to have, I've talked to you guys about it, is with the new books coming out. The the High Republic takes place what two to four hundred years before 
So they're, they're talking about like where Jedi are at their peak, like for peace and prosperity. Um, but Jedi have the option to like not be Jedi. Like they can train, but they can kind of leave the order and do their own things. You could just be like a mercenary Jedi, technically, or not Jedi, but you know what I mean. Force wielder, lightsaber yeah, user. You could be like a barkeeper. <laughs> like you can do anything you want. <laughs> like you could be a sweet. Waves, waves his hand. You didn't tip me enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's actually twenty five percent because <laughs> because there are like these rogue Jedi out there. I would love to see that maybe mm. Luke encounters a lost tribe and maybe hands Grogu off. And maybe that's how we kind of explain where Grogu is, you know? I mean, he's a, he's Yoda. He's a Yoda species. He lives, we know how long he lives for and he's still just a baby. Well, and we want, we don't have, we don't have any information aside from uh, yep. Yaddle and Yoda about that species out in the greater Star Wars universe. And that's stuff that they what, should be exploring. What if it's Yaddle's kid? Yaddle and Yoda's kid. No, Yoda don't play around with that kind of stuff. I think Yaddle. Just brainwashed Yoda. Found some side somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't just open that can of worms and introduce another species that has not been in the movies or anything else throughout the entire series and then just give them to Luke and we never talk about him again. Like, that's got to come back and some way or it has to pay off or there needs to be a if you're a writer if you're creating a, a movie or a tv show you don't write that unless there's a reason to write it so i think this is all going to come back i don't think we've seen the last of we baby grogu uh probably not even in mandalorian but i i think that he'll come back in a couple of seasons i hope so that's what everybody loves at grogu Moving on to the third one. So I wrote out my list as well, uh, and I decided to go with a character that I think is maybe a, not obscure, but we don't really know much about this one other than the few seconds of screen time that we got it in the Rebels finale, and that's uh, Jason Sendula. Hera and Kanan Jarrus' kid, we assume, has to be Force-sensitive. I assume that type of thing is passed down. I don't know if midichlorians are still canon or if they, they just stepped across from that. They, they mentioned are. it in Mandalorian, yep. didn't they? The Doctor, the M Count. Yep. Okay, so maybe that's passed through the bloodline, father to child or something like that. But this is a character who was around uh, throughout Rebels, was in the finale, and would probably be around 17 years old by now, which, as we know in Star Wars, young adults are, you know, who their main characters are that they kind of like to have, because Luke was supposed to be a, a younger boy in A New Hope, was he not? He was a teenager. Yeah. So it would make sense to kind of see that, and I'd just be curious, you know, if 17 years have gone by since we've seen him, has he been training? Did they, Hera and he, go to the Outer Rim and find Ezra? Maybe he became the Padawan of Ezra or something like that? I just think that this is a character that could branch off into more lore, more books, and more stories that I want to know because they seemed cool. Kanan, as your father, and Hera being the military mind and brave soul she is as your mother, that's insane to me, that combination. <laughs> and they, they can't. They, they, these, these characters from Rebels just can't go off into the sunset. I think no. they're too good, and they're, mm -hmm. like, they ended their story too short. There has to be more. And that'd be a good way. Like I said, you said he's around 17. And you'd get a Kanan Force Ghost. We could get Freddie Prince Jr. in live action as yeah. a Force Ghost talking to his son. That would be great. Uh, yeah, like Jason, he he didn't, they might not have known what the mission was. He could, Luke could have been like, hey, go pick up this this kid at this ship or whatever. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Josh? You got any extra points to put on there about Jason Sandula? Not so much uh, him, but like Ezra is such a like a, it's it's so crazy what Ezra can do and what like uh, Favreau and Filoni have the options of doing because we saw in Rebels like Ahsoka dies and then mm. Ezra goes through the plane of all existence and pulls her out and he essentially changes time and that's why she gets a little pissy mm. with him. But I mean, who's to say that he doesn't go back into there and changes some of like something else? Man, that's like, a good that's point. What I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna piggyback you know? on this because Ezra is my next pick because he's too cool not to talk about, and he would have been a perfect choice. Far too cool not yes, to talk about. Yes, because where did he go? Like the end of Rebels, you can't just, especially when they bring in, when they brought in Ahsoka, they have to bring in these Rebels characters. Like they have yeah. to. Well, and Ahsoka dropping if, the Thrawn drop name, the Thrawn you, name yeah. anybody who watched the shows or anything, that's all you're thinking about is that exact thing. And um, I mean, that's going to be what the show's about. The Ahsoka spinoff is going to be her hunt for Thrawn, and likely that's going to introduce Ezra to the fold. You have to. For those of you who don't know, the end of Rebels, Ezra goes off with Thrawn in a rapid light speed where nobody knows where the heck they went, and that was it. 
So mm-hmm. where did Ezra go with Thrawn? He was last seen with him. And for oh, if he would have came back in th- that episode, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. That would have been so awesome. <laughs> I would have screamed louder than for Luke, 100%. Just to show his hand, like, have a pistol and you can see it turn into the lightsaber. Ooh, look, I got goosebumps. Oh, so I can goosebumps yeah. just thinking about Spicy. it. Spicy. What do you think about Ezra, Josh? No, uh, again, here's another character. Like, I remember when Rebels was first pitched and... Kurt being the super fanboy is like, this is going to be awesome. And I was like, this sucks. There's no Jedi. Mm -hmm. Like this whole animated series sounds bad. And man, Mm -hmm. Rebels is so awesome. And the lore that. And again, Kurt was right. (laughs) Again. Well, (laughs) let's not go crazy here. (laughs) But the lore that's introduced and like Filoni Mm. once again proving that like he is the man to be in charge of Star Wars. Phenomenal. So like Ezra, another character that like you grow to love. Like he's so Mm -hmm. cool. The things that he can do. I'm just like, there we go. Who are we forgetting Ahsoka? And we've got Ahsoka. So uh, last honor is going to go to you, Mr. Josh Gruber. Uh, Who's the fifth Jedi we would have preferred to see? Yes. So like we've dipped into Legends. We've dipped into the animated stuff. Video games. Cal Kestis. Ooh. That was was my fifth, you know. But like, again, like there's all these characters that come from different like resources Mm -hmm. and they're just pulling from what they know. Like, again, like Skywalker stuff. Let's dip into those video games or comic books. Man, like how cool would it be to have Starkiller? Cool. Sam, if they brought Sam Witwer yeah. in as Starkiller, another freak Whitwer's out moment. Awesome. Witwer as like Witwer is anything, anything he does. Darth Maul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anything yeah. he does is absolute gold. But that's what I mean. Like there's just just so much so much gold out there. So many good characters that really the sky's the limit. Well, and he's already cast. You have the guy from Shameless. So they already have the actor that they would want to be using. And I would assume when he signed on to do Fallen Order, there was like a clause in there that just said, Hey, yeah. bro. You know, we've been using uh, the guy who played Tarkin for 40 years. So just know that you were going to be using your you're likeness for quite some time. Uh, so that's, yeah, I think that's an awesome top five. Uh, but I do think that there's probably some honorable mentions. Like you said, there's so much lore to pull from. So we, I don't want to focus on these ones for too long just because we are kind of strapped on time. But I do want to hear just outside of the top five, some other ones that you thought could have maybe slid in that could have, if they would have popped up, you would have thought, oh, OK, yeah. Just to make everybody mad, uh, Mace Windu. <laughs> Base Windu, number one on my list. <laughs> Never got to him, but that would no be an way. awful idea. Let me just throw this out there. Oh. That'd be aw- he's dead. Everybody, he's dead. He's Why gone. would it be so terrible? He's he's gone. Stupid. Samuel L. Jackson cannot be killed. Yes, he can. Nor can Mace Windu. Yes, he can. He can be killed. He fell out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> agree to disagree from uh, one that I would have liked to it was on my list but I never got to it just because there were a few that bumped it down but uh, for me like I said of the handful of Star Wars books that I've read Quinlan Voss is from Dark Disciple his whole story with Asajj Ventress everything we saw with him throughout the Clone Wars episodes he is such a cool like mercenary bounty hunter uh, Josh again your favorite term great Jedi he doesn't no. really <laughs> to the light or the dark he's just kind of does what he wants and he has a good time and he isn't he's in the jedi order but like loosely a part of it um i wish asajj ventress was still with us because she was a great character as well their whole dynamic but quinlan voss to me i think is someone that needs to come back at some point what do you guys think yeah like when you are uh the jedi council's number one guy to be like go do shady stuff and he, yeah. he gets a pass. Yeah. <laughs> Quinlan Voss, go have some drinks. Without doubt. Yeah, go, go enjoy <laughs> what you got to do, you know? Skirt that dark side. <laughs> How about you, Curtis? You got any honorable mentions you want to throw before we, uh, we, we cut this out? All I'm going to say is Skywalkers are over. It's over and done with. I want to see everything new. I want to bring people into the fold that don't read the legends and that didn't read the comics and don't watch rebels and don't watch clone wars that they meet these characters and they say wow this is from clone wars and let's go back and watch clone wars and see how amazing ahsoka that piece of star yeah. wars is and how Ezra. amazing rebels yeah. is like i don't care if it's a cartoon they're both huge parts of star wars lore there's so there's thousands of years we can pull from there's different species there's everything i don't want to hear the skywalker name unless it's just a passing reference i don't want to see somebody named skywalker on the screen anymore for a long long time 
So obviously we have our opinions, but we can only assume that the listeners have theirs as well. So let us know in the comments. Did you like the Mandalorian season two finale? Were you stoked to see Luke Skywalker? Or did you think that there could have been a better character to come in? And who do you think it would have been? Let us know in the comments and uh, always keep it locked on CBR Saga. Josh, Curtis, always a pleasure. And uh, thanks for joining me, boys. I can't wait to do this some more with you guys in the future. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, anytime. Thanks, man.